Hi, and welcome to this course on an introduction to SumPy. So SumPy is a library for symbolic calculation in Python. So this course is taught by me, Eirik, and also by Stina, and we'll alternate between each lesson. So first of all, what really is SumPy? So here's a quote from SumPy's official documentation. They say that SumPy is a Python library for symbolic mathematics. It aims to become a full featured computer algebra system while keeping the code as simple as possible in order to be comprehensive and easily accessible. SumPy is written entirely in Python. So as they say, SumPy is a Python library, it's meant to do symbolic mathematics. The great thing about being written in Python is that if you already know Python, then learning SumPy is not that difficult. So here's an example of what you can do with SumPy. This is just one of many examples I could have chosen. So here we have an explicit integral. You have an integral of a function here being e to the x cosine 2x. This is a typical integral you can see in an introductory calculus course. And the integral has the precise value on the right hand side. So this is a bit tedious to do by hand, but by using SumPy, you can get this result really, really quick. And SumPy has loads of features like solving equations, integrals, derivatives, ordinary differential equations, series, limits, and so on and so on. There is a lot you can do with SumPy. So why specifically should you use SumPy? First of all, it's free. That means that you don't need a license to use SumPy. Secondly, as I've already mentioned, it's entirely built in Python. So Python is a very established programming language and building SumPy on top of Python is a great choice. What you should do is to use SumPy to do very tedious computations, which essentially we're too lazy to do by hand. Secondly, it's also great to verify our computations. So if we first have done a computation by hand, and verifying it by SumPy makes us a lot more confident that we don't have any errors. One great thing is that it's pretty easy to pick up the basics in SumPy. So by the end of this course, which is not a too long course, then we'll know the basics of SumPy and how to apply it to concrete problems of a wide range. I find a great thing about using SumPy is that since it's a Python library, it's easily compatible with other useful Python libraries, for instance, like NumPy for numeric computations and Matplotlib for plotting. So let's emphasize a bit this difference before we move on between numeric and symbolic computation. Numeric computations are always concerned with finite decimal numbers. In that way, they don't represent pi or one third or the square root of two explicitly. They just represent a decimal approximation and then work with that further on. So for instance here, as an example, the numeric approximation of square root of two with eight decimals is this number here, as you've probably seen previously. So a numeric computation library, like for instance NumPy, don't really care about the square root of two other than it being this decimal number here. On the other hand, symbolic computations with SumPy, which we are looking at, are concerned with representing numbers as symbols satisfying some mathematical rules. Hence they represent, say, the number pi, one third, and square root of two exactly. They don't do this decimal bit, they simply represent it as an object satisfying certain features. So for example, the symbolic representation of square root of 2 is, by definition, the number such that if you raise it to the second power, then you get 2 back. And this is the way SumPy operates. So this is, in a sense, two different paradigms. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but they're both useful in different settings. So for instance, numeric computation is great for plotting or visualizing, while symbolic computations are great for understanding the essential features of, say, an equation. So this is what we'll cover in this course. So there will be 10 lectures. The first one here is just an introduction to SumPy. In the second one, we'll start by defining symbols, which is the essential building block of SumPy. In the third one, we'll look at the different data types. In the fourth one, we'll solve equations. Fifth one, we'll start simplifying a lot of the expressions, really drawing out some of the power of SumPy. In the sixth and seventh, we'll consider derivatives and integrals. In the eighth, there are limits and series going on. In the ninth, we're looking at ordinary differential equations and how to solve them using SumPy. And in the the 10th and last one, we're going numerical and looking how to combine SumPy with NumPy and Matplotlib. So for the rest of this video, we're just going to look a bit at the documentation page, then we're going to install SumPy, and then finally we'll just try out a simple SumPy command to see that it works. So here I am at SumPy's documentation page. This is at SumPy.org, you can find a link in the description of this video. So here they also have some arguments for why you should choose SumPy and also some projects that are using SumPy. There are quite a lot of them, so I encourage you after this course, take a look here and see if you find any of them interesting. You should note that here on the right, you can see the different versions that are going on. So the newest one at the current moment is version 1.7.1. Depending on the way you install SumPy, you might get either version 1.7 or 1.6. It doesn't really matter because there aren't any major changes in these versions. So if you go to the top of the page here, you can go to documentation, 
Here you can see a big PDF version of the docs and you can also find documentation and tutorials here, but I just want to focus on the installation here, so all the way at the top. There are many ways to install SumPy. So what SumPy itself recommends is to use Anaconda, which is a free Python distribution here that includes a lot of the common useful packages used in scientific computing. So the reason this is recommended is because many nice features of SumPy are only enabled when certain libraries are installed. And they give an example here with matplotlib and simple plotting. So I strongly recommend you to do this through Anaconda. If you want to do it through other means, say through pip install or cloning a Git repository, that is of course also possible. And you can look at this here, but we will be using the Anaconda distribution and specifically working in Jupyter Notebooks. If you don't have Anaconda installed from before, I just recommend clicking here on this link. This will take you to Anaconda's website and here you can find the individual edition for various operating systems. So here I am in a new Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook, they come installed with the Anaconda distribution. If you have any problems getting to this point, then we have a previous series on NumPy in this channel where we go through the setup process a bit more carefully. In any case, let's just press here to set a title. So let's just call this lecture one and call this introduction to SumPy. So just to give you a 30 second introduction to Jupyter, what matters in Jupyter is that you have code cells like this, and you can also change them to what's called markdown cells. When you have markdown cells, you can write what's called markdown, which is a language where you can highlight certain features of text. So for instance, here I can write a hashtag. And then if I write introduction, to SumPy and execute this cell. For now, we can execute it by pressing run. Then you can see here that this became a title. So that was a markdown cell. And then this here is a code cell. So here you can write usual Python code, say printing one plus one, and then running the cell. That gives us two. The markdown cells are for texts and explanations and headings, while code cells are for Python code. So let's just remove this. Let's get started with importing SumPy. So I will import SumPy and I will import it as SP. So here I'm setting an alias saying that every time I need something in SumPy, I can just reference this something by SP dot and then that object's name. Now if I execute this cell here, that seems hopefully to work. And now I have SumPy imported. A big thing you should note here, if you're looking at the documentation of SumPy, is that they don't use this convention. They write from SumPy import star. That means that you can refer to functions without specifying that they come from the SciPy library. This can be good for short documentation, but it's in the bigger picture actually a bit of a bad practice. So we'll follow the convention of importing SumPy as SP and being a bit more verbose. So the only thing I'll do in this video is to look at the square root function. So inside SumPy, we have the square root function. So I can write sp.sqrt. This is an abbreviation of square root. And inside here, I can pass in a number. One thing you should note about Jupyter, in contrast with some other editors, is that if I run a cell where I've just written something here, then this will be implicitly printed if that's possible. And here you can see that it's printed out square root of two. And actually just returning it like this instead of printing it explicitly can make the display here become a bit nicer. So if I print it, it looks like this, square root of two. So in my humble opinion, if you don't print it, then it actually looks nicer. So I'll just keep it like this. And this already is a big indication that SumPy is all about symbolic computations. The only thing it cares about with square root of two is not the decimal expansion, it's simply that algebraic property of being a square root. And that means if I go down here and write sp and then take my square root function, and then I raise it to the second power like this, so this is a syntax for raising to the second power. If you're used to Python, then you realize that, oh, this is just Python syntax, so we don't need to learn anything more. If I run this now, by clicking run, then this becomes two. So here SumPy really catches the important feature of the square root of two, namely that it's a number that when you square it to the second power, it becomes two again. This is not the same behavior as you get from the more numeric side of things. As a simple example, let's also just go up here and make a second import. So let's import the math module, the built-in math module in Python. I don't need to give it an alias. And then if I do math.squirt, this also has a square root function. You can see that if I run this, as I get a name error because math is not defined because I forgot to run this cell. Let's run the cell and then again run this. Here you can see that I get the decimal expansion for square root of two. That's what's important for the math module because the math module is doing things numerically. So if I now compute it to the second power and finally run it, then I'll get kind of two, 
I get to basically up to 15 decimals and then there is some small rounding error here but you can see here that it doesn't really realize that this is precisely 2 simply because it treats this part as just a decimal number. So here you can see the really big difference between this one which is a symbolic computation system and this one which is a numeric one. And for this course we're of course focusing on SumPy and all its cool features. So I know that this is just a surface level introduction but in the next video Estina will show you how to work with symbols in SumPy and that is really the workhorse of the whole library. Thanks and we'll see you soon.